YouTube, it's Maddie the Emptiness Scrapper. Welcome back to my channel, I'm so glad you stopped by. If it's your first time, welcome. I hope you enjoy the video. And if you're returning, I am super glad you came back. So today is another episode of Crafty Chat and Coffee. It is a summer version because I've got my jumbo iced coffee. I will put it aside so you can see the things I wanted to talk about. And I will just sip without it interfering with the shot. So I have a couple things that I wanted to talk about. And uh, the first thing is really this little kit. So this is a Creative Memories um, card kit. And recently I completed this kit as part of a collab, which was Smash Our Stash 2021. You had to use a kit. And this is truly the only kit I had in my craft room. I've been carried around for years. And I thought, now's the time. However, I was blessed on June 3rd that for my anniversary, I got to see both of my kids. And we haven't seen both kids at the same time since December of 2019. And I got to tell you, it was just wonderful. I just can't tell you how much I needed that visit. And I appreciate all that my kids do and um they do their best to stay in touch and have been able to see one of my kids who is just a car ride away a little bit more often but my youngest son is a uh, air flight away and it was just such a joy to end the drought on seeing my family so that being said, I had to do this collab and I thought, um, you know, I would be able to get it done because it is a kit and I did do the kit somewhat um, and I posted the video which went up today and when I looked at what I had created, I was not really happy with that. This kit, as I said, I was carrying around with me for the longest time. And by the time I opened it, I found out, and I did share this on the collab, that there were a lot of pieces left um, that were not inside the kit. And so I knew this actually because for Creative Memories kits, they show you what the cards should look like and they give you different numbers to um find the pieces and i knew after i sorted out all the pieces i did not have them so what i did what for this card i had all the pieces for select few cards i had all the pieces and uh for some cards i did not so what I did was I went digging in my stash and I tried to complete the cards with things in my room. When I saw the video I had posted, I thought, oh, those cards do not look completed to me at all. And I went back and added additional elements from my stash to improve the cards that I had made. So if you saw that share for Smash Our Stash, I added to this card. I added to this card. This one did not even have the die cut yet and I did state that I was planning to put it there. I added to this card. Again, it was the die cut. I added to this card just the white elements top and bottom. It really just looked super sleepy. Same thing here. I added the white elements top and bottom and I really felt that it helped finish off the card. And this is the last one I added to. I just actually pulled it all apart and added the white mat and I really think 
it helps a lot. So with the joy of having my children home, I believe I probably rushed through this kit. Um, I imagine if I had had all of the pieces, it would not have been such a challenge to make something uh, more pleasing to the eye. But um, in the end, I added what I felt was needed and um, I think well, I will probably feel more comfortable using those cards. Also, I wanted to talk a little bit about this thing. A um, little while ago, maybe a month or two, I posted a video on losing your crafty mojo. One of the things I do when I lose my mojo is... Um, Maybe I won't make a card, but I will cut card bases or um, do some crafty rearranging in my room. On one particular day, I made this item, which is used with a stamp platform, um, and you use it to put pressure on the platform. So this is an item that I had seen on YouTube. Uh, a, a crafter had received it for a gift for the holidays and that item was purchased on Etsy and I thought the item that I had seen was not exactly like this the glass element did look to me exactly like this without the Yankee Candle logo on top but it was not a shaker, it was decorated in a different way, and it had a few more layers at the bottom where the uh, felt is attached. But I had lost my mojo. I took a look, I said, hmm, let's see if I can find it on Etsy. And I found it, but there were none available. It was sold out. So I thought, well, I have an empty Yankee Candle. I'm just gonna make one. And that's exactly what I did. And so I spoke about that on my Mojo video. Now, the um, creator of this item and this particular one is looks like the one that is called a stamp bug. The creator of the stamp bug that is sold on Etsy um, left a message on that video um, and I told her I thought she had a great idea, and, it, and if she didn't want me, uh, I had planned to, I had asked if anyone wanted to see a, um, a video on how to make this, and I had planned to do that because a couple people asked me, um, but uh, I told her that uh, I would not do it if she didn't want to, and she said, that this was her livelihood. And honest to goodness, this is just a hobby for me. So I was happy to, um, I was happy to tell her I would announce on my channel that I'm not gonna show uh, a video on this item. However, I have been to Etsy a number of times and it is still not up there. So unless I hear from her again, I may consider doing it anyway. Maybe she's given it up. I don't know. But um, you can see what this is. It's the top of a Yankee candle. I made a shaker out of it. I put some felt on the bottom. And um, any crafter who wants one will look at it and be able to figure out how to put one together in five seconds. It's a great gift if some family member wants to pick it up. Um, but... Whether I show you or whether I don't, any paper crafter or maker is going to be able to put this together on their own without instruction from me. Um, so I told her, and if you're watching, feel free to post a link. I told her I would be happy to post a link to her website to help her out because I think she's got a great thing. But... If people see these, and these have been posted all over the place in this form and other forms, um, crafters are just going to put these together themselves. This is a great item for a non-crafter to gift to 
to a crafter. But the folks watching YouTube, if they want to make it, they're making it. So that's a story on why that's on my desk. Now, here um, I have a card that I made uh, for my husband for our anniversary. And uh, I used the uh, Simon Hurley um, scene building stencil um, die cut. And I used my brand new um, square pencils to color that in. And I had a lot of fun with that. Um, then I also made a Father's Day card. That was before I did that kit and had two Father's Day cards, so I'm set for a while. And that's just a rendition, my rendition of my dog Lexi. It's a Tim Holtz stamp, but I think it looks just like her. She's a, a yellow Labradoodle mini. And she's got all over her nose, and I always have a lot of fun adding her to the cards. And the inside just says, you are possum. So, uh, I'm excited for uh, that for my husband. And I also have a little tip, which is sort of a sidebar. Recently, maybe not so recently anymore... I, get, I um, was blessed with a huge haul from Mother's Day. And in that haul, uh, I received, among many other things, and I'll link the haul if you're interested, I received these two large sets. These are the 120 square watercolor pencils. And... These are the 120 Ohuhu brush markers. Just going to give you a peek because I think they're so pretty. There they are. Now, these were gifts. And uh, my family spoils me. So there were many more gifts. But I want to say to you, if you want to... Try to keep yourself from overspending. I want you to try to be sure and swatch all of your new items. Because let me tell you something. After it, it took me up until right about now from Mother's Day to put away swatch and inventory all of the items that I received for Mother's Day. So if you want to try to stop spending so much, and if you think bringing too many things into your craft room is a problem for you, try to be diligent about your swatching and organizing. There was so much work for me to do to take care of this and this that I kid you not, I don't even want to think about bringing anything new into my craft room. It's time for me to craft. So I hope that little tip helps you. If you don't usually swatch your items, Give it a try. It is great to help keep track of what you have. It is great to help you um, keep from buying things that you don't really need. And it is exhausting and a great motivator to use what you have and take a break from buying. So, I hope you enjoyed this video. I hope you had a little bit of coffee, tea, iced coffee, enjoyed the little chitty chat, and um, checking in. So I hope you're getting a chance to see your family or your friends or whoever you've been missing, and uh, I hope you're looking forward to a fun and restful summer, 
and I hope you'll come back and join me again. Have a great day, and I'll see you next time. Bye-bye, YouTube.